So as you know, I've been using the vlog here to digest some truths that I've heard the sages say that on the surface seem fine, but when you begin thinking about them, have some amazing implications. And uh, one of them, uh, I've read twice now. Uh, the first one was with Sri Nishagadatta when he's pointing out that there is no past, present, and future, that there's only present, and that uh, there's not a flow of time. He says that the universe is created new in each moment. Okay, I, I assumed that that was a philosophical statement of some kind on his part. Uh, I didn't really think about it too much. You know, I kind of read it like you read scripture a lot of times, like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> but now I'm thinking about it because just this week in this Buddhist book that I'm reading, uh, written by Suzuki, he said of his master, said the same thing, that the universe is continually new. Uh, and Sri Nishragadatta goes on to say that there's no cause and effect in the final realization that what we call cause and effect is merely repetition. So what does this mean? I, how can that be? It really, for that to be true, what we're experiencing literally has to be an illusion. I, you know, not in a philosophical sense. I mean, it has to be absolutely an illusion. So I, it got me thinking about a movie. Okay, now if you have a movie uh, reel, right, uh, the old the old fashioned film. As I began to think about that, when you ex when you actually experience a movie, you're not actually experiencing the movie because you've got one still frame after another, and there's no movement in any of those frames. So even though it's the frames that you're seeing on the screen one after the other. What you're actually experiencing is the in-between of the frames. In that in-between frames, between one frame and the next frame, your mind builds the missing jump, builds the missing gap. It makes the movement. It assumes movement from one, from one frame to the next. So when you're actually watching a movie, you're not actually watching the frames. You're actually watching your mind's in interpolation of what happens between the frames because that's what makes movement. That's what makes something happen. And in doing that, you're, you're then completely in the mind with that. You're only using what you're getting from your eyes as a prompt to build the in-between space on those frames. So that got me thinking quite a bit. And as I've shared in the past that when you go to a movie you're actually the one that builds the movie. Because if you had no experiences similar to anything in the movie, which would be impossible because it's one human experience to another, but assuming that you did, it, you would watch it like a dog watches it, you know, without any real connection to it, until, of course, until he sees another dog in the frame. But there would be no movie there for the dog. There's no story there for the dog because there's no association, no attachment. Uh, no identity with what's being shown. And so not only are you getting the movement by your interpolation of what's going on between the, between the uh, frames, but you're also uh, implying everything that happens in the movie. You're the one associating the soundtrack, which is separate and apart, with uh, the in-between interpolations of the mind on the screen. And you're also the one that's uh, breaking down the colors and arrangement of the composition on the screen into people and into uh, story, associations and relationships, that it's completely and utterly up to you. That if there's a, what you assume is a picture of a man and a woman because you've taken those compositions of color on the film and said, oh, that's a man and oh, that's a woman, and then you interpolate relationship, and then you grab your information from your experiences of relationships onto what must be happening in between the frames of this particular movie. So really, they should pay you to go to the movies because you're the one doing all the work. You're the one interpolating the movement between screens, between uh, snapshots of film, 
and you're the one providing all the association of the composition being people on the screen, and you're the one assimilating an accompanying soundtrack into a unity with the film, you're the one providing all the stories. The tears that are coming to your eyes are from your own payment of pain in your own relationships. <laughs> You know, your own hurt is coming from your own experience in, in, the, in, in your life being projected in these movies. So I think that that's what's going on in, uh, in real life, that we're given one still frame after another, and we don't actually live in the present because there's no movement in the present. The present is just one of those snapshots in a reel of film. And so you've actually are living between them. What you're doing is your mind is taking a continual snapshot of the present and then con comparing that snapshot to the new present. And that interpolative space is what causes movement, what causes change. And so that's why we live in a world of, of constant change, because we're not actually stabilized in the unchanging eternal present, the absolute, in which nothing changes, but we're actually living in between frames. We take that snapshot with the mind, take another snapshot with the mind, take another snapshot with the mind, and then we live always in between those two snapshots where things are moving or where the mind creates movement from one snapshot to the next, an assumption on our part, because we're in mind and we're not in the present. We're not understanding what actually is. Something to think about, if you like thinking about those things, if it helps you to detach from the things that are keeping you in a state of non-understanding, in a state of wrong ideation. May that be the case, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs>